Okay, our word of the day. Our word of the day comes from Roman 12, verses 4 and 5. And it says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is talking about us being in Christ. We're talking about the body. Christ is the head and we are the body of Christ. Amen. So we let him lead us and guide us and direct us. And we just follow him. In Romans, it goes on to tell us, starting from um, Romans 12, verses 4 to 13, it talks about this. It says, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. We know that the eye don't have the same function as a mouth and the eye and the arms don't have the same function as a leg. This is how we are built in the body of Christ. We are the different members in the body, but we don't all have the same functions. You know, so we being many are one body in Christ. God is the one that, drives us. He's the one that directs us. He's the one that's in control because he is the head. And we do what the head tells. The body does what the head tells us. And the head, in this case, in our case, is Jesus Christ. And individual members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy. Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches and teachings. These are the functions of the many members' bodies of Christ. There are those that are called to be evangelists. There are called to, called to be pastors. Those are, those are called to be teachers. So we are to use our gifts that God gave us according to the gifts that he has given to us. It says, he who exalts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. All the functions of the body, the body of Christ. Behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. We know that there is no darkness in the Lord. There's, it's only good. And we, as members and the bodies of Christ, we are not to do evil. We are to cling to what is good. Be kindly affected to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, referred in spirit, serving the Lord. The body is designed to serve the Lord. The Lord tells us and guides us and leads us. He leads us through his word. He leads us through his spirit. He is the one. And through all of these things, we walk in love, serving him and him alone. It says, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. We know serving the Lord is not an easy thing. We can read about here about this gentleman who was persecuted struck down and beaten for serving the Lord. We have, though we don't have tribulations quite that severe, at least not yet anyway, it may come. It may be coming a time where we're going to all have to decide when we're going to continue to trust in the Lord and be with him, whether we get persecuted or not. 
But for now, we don't have those kind of struggles. We just have our day-to-day struggles in our daily life. But we know God is good and God is with us. And we just need to just stay fast in prayer. Prayer is the key to everything in our walk. It gets us through all our troubles. It gets us through all our worries and our stresses and our situations in life, the things that people do to us. Prayer is the key to it all. So that's why this word says continually steadfast in prayer, because that's the way to get overcome everything that we go through. Because we are his saints, we are his body, and God is with us. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. You know, the verse was talking about, and then back in Romans where it says, you know, the eye can't be a egg, a leg. So if the eye was a leg, where would the walking be? Where would the seeing be? Or it couldn't be a mouth, a mouth. You know, everyone, all the parts of our body are equally important because without them, one function of the body would not work. If we didn't have our eyes, we could not see. If we didn't have our nose, we could not smell. If we didn't have our mouths, we could not talk. So it's okay if one of us is the eye and one of us is the mouth, because they are equally as important in the eyes of God. Because the body wouldn't be complete without all the parts. And he talks about how we are all the body of his body working together as one. We all may be individuals. But in the greater good, we are all one body in Christ, put together. Praise the Lord. So remember that we are also in Christ. Amen. And we are important to our Lord Jesus Christ. We are very important. Don't let anyone think that we are any less because we are we are loved by him. And John 17, 11 says, Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. I have come to you, Holy Father. Jesus knows that in this world we will have tribulations. We will have pain. We will have suffering. He talked about even we will have the poor and widows because we know that things are going to happen. We're going to have those. But as the body of Christ, we are here to to comfort people and we are to love our brothers and sisters. That's why the word tells us in the commandments, the two greatest commandments are to love God and love people. This is our party, our purpose in the body of Christ to do. It says, keep though your name to whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. We are one with the Christ, amen? And he is one with the Father, and we all are one in him. Praise the Lord. So let us just remember that we do go through things. Things are tough sometimes, but we are one in our Lord Jesus Christ. And he sees everything and knows everything. And we just need to just pray and pray and pray. And we know that he will come for us. He will get us through all our tragedies, all our issues, everything that we go through. Because we are his children and he is our father. And and in this case, he is the head and we are the body. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word. And we just thank you for you just showing us who we are in you. We know you are the head of the body. You run the church. You run everything. And we are the body. We are your body. And that you just move us as you see fit. Just continue to just give us more faith and love and hope as we just continue to follow you on this journey. Just help us to continue to get through the trials and tribulations and the things that we go through. Because you know that we are in this world. But we are also in you. And we just lift. thank you for that. 
and bless everyone here today, those that hear this now, those that will hear this in the future. We just encourage you to just continue to just stay the course, stay with the Lord and everything that will come to pass. Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath day today. We just pray that we can just surrender all our burdens, all our stresses, all our issues, everything, because your word tells us we are not supposed to carry those things on your holy day. We have to surrender our day to you, not doing our own things, but following the leading of your Holy Spirit. So fill us with your spirit today, Lord. Guide us today as we go through this day and bless us all today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.